All right, I think that worked and we're live here. I'm just gonna give a minute for this to catch up and say hello to everybody who's already waiting and welcome. Okay, looks good. We are on here and ready to go. How's everyone doing today? I'm excited to be back. It feels like it's been a really long time. It probably hasn't, but it kind of feels like that. So I'm looking forward to being back with you guys all. All right, let me scroll back because I know I saw somebody at the beginning there. Margaret, welcome. This is your first time and I'm so glad you're here to join us. Um, so just like Margaret did, if you are new and this is your first time, please leave us a comment and let us know. We love to say hello and welcome you if this is your first time. And then um, a couple things to cover real quick here as we get ready to get started. Um, if you've joined us before, you already know that we give away a $15 gift card at the end of the live. The way to enter that is just what you're doing. Uh, leave comments and um, stuff in the chat. Chat with everybody. Ask questions if you have them. Answer anyone's questions if you happen to know the answer. Um, and to answer Valerie's question real quick, the June release is the 20, hold on, go look at the calendar, the 27th of this month. It's right at the end. Um, so I'm using a set from the May release today. And next week, Leah and I should be here with our um, sneak peek of the release as well. I think that's our plan. And hello, Melissa, another first time. Welcome to you as well. All right. And another first from Washington, Susan. Welcome. All right. Um, and behind the pink fresh name, this is another uh, important thing. Whenever you see the pink fresh on there, that is my partner in crime, Leah. We take turns doing these lives. And then the other one is behind the scenes catching the questions. So especially once I start crafting, I'm doing a good job right now of catching comments, but I get started. Uh, it's a little harder sometimes to keep up with those. Um, so Leah does a really great job of catching any questions that I might have missed. And if we accidentally both uh, miss them for some reason, I promise we're not ignoring you. Sometimes it's just hard to keep up with all of that. Um, so just ask again, and hopefully we'll see it the second time around. Um, and Karen, welcome first time as well. All right, uh, let's see. Leah behind the scenes giveaway. I'm just going through the mental list of everything I need to cover. Oh, all the supplies I'm using today are linked in the video description. Um, so you can refer to those. We just found that that's easier. So everything's all in one place. It'll be available on replay as well. Um, and you just kind of have to expand the description. So if you feel free to ask if there's anything you missed, but it will all be listed below. And then one final thing um, I did forget to mention, an extra way to get an entry for the gift card is to share this video. You can click that little share button and grab the code, send it in an email, a message to a friend, share it on your Facebook page, um, in a group if you know it's allowed in the rules. Um, so, and then come back and just leave us a comment and let us know you did that and that'll count as another entry. And one final thing um, that we just appreciate if you can do is if you click that little, I think on my computer is over here. I have no idea where it is on a phone, but the little thumbs up like button, that just helps more people find us, um, helps our reach and we appreciate that. And we're always grateful if you're enjoying it, if you hit that little thumbs up button. And Lee already answered the question about the next release. So I'm going to switch the camera around. I'm going to use Painted Daisies and kind of a fun, um, oh, that's the wrong button. Sorry, hold on a second. There we go. I don't want to hit the wrong thing and cancel this. Okay, there we go. Got it. Make sure that worked. Okay, good. I'm gonna do, the last time I did a live, I did kind of a fun, unusual color combo by mixing some inks together. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Valerie, that's sweet. All right, so I wanted to play with um, a fun color combo today. And this is actually, in fact, hold on a second, let me grab them real quick. Last week was my daughter's 19th birthday and I did some mixing and matching of ink colors and kind of came up with another fun blend that I wanna play with today on this. But let me show you the card I made over on my windowsill. So this is the card that I made and I mixed together, um, I used yellow and coral reef, but I mixed some orange over the top to kind of get this, I don't know, kind of a 
not a coral, more of a sunset mango kind of, it's just a really fresh, fun color combo. So that's um, the card I made for her birthday. And then a little with the leftover pieces that was using the hibiscus set. I haven't even photographed or gotten these ready to post. So you're getting a sneak peek of those that I'll get posted eventually. Um, but that's what inspired my color combo for today that we're going to use. So I'm seeing more um, first time on here too. Let me get this up on my phone that I can see. There we go. Maybe I can see the comments a little bit better as I continue to craft. So I'm going to stamp this first and we're gonna use um, the stamped image to go ahead and line up to. I know I was pretty excited about how that color combo came out. So I'm glad you guys all, it's such a fun, juicy, tropical. It just makes me think of summer I don't know I don't like it though all right this is a nice big this is pretty much the size of an A2 card this image so it's a nice big stamp and what I tend to like to do you might see here I'm kind of holding the stamp down and peeling the backing off of it it's pretty big and solid I don't think you have to worry but I always figure I mean my backing's going to curl up but this will stick right back down as soon as I put it on my stamp image and then I don't risk, you know, pulling a little area. Photopolymer is pretty tough, but I mean, if you hit the right crack and you, you're yanking too hard, you know, it could happen that you tear something that you don't want to. So I don't want to risk that. So I'm going to stick with um, just pulling off the backing instead of pulling off the stamp. And I'm using a larger piece of cardstock. You could use an A2 or anything else. Um, but I'm going to use a bigger piece just because I like that extra room to work with. And I'm going to do just like I did for that other card that I shared. I'm going to use um, Aquamarine to stamp this in. I kind of tried it on that other one and I love how it worked. I'm going to make sure that I leave this lined up in the corner. I won't have to restamp, but I always like to restamp. I just feel like um, I get a better image and I like it. I like how it does that. So I'm gonna use aquamarine and yeah, Luann, I have ripped a stamp before pulling it off too. That's why I've just found on that, but you know what? I'd rather just curl up my uh, backing sheet and know that I'm not risking. And then if it's something that's a little thinner, um, more of a frame, um, something you don't wanna deform or stretch out, then that's really helpful as well, so. Okay, and that's actually a really great impression. I'm not gonna stamp again now because I'm gonna leave this lined up in my uh, Misty so I can stamp again at the end and just get that really crisp um, finished look. So I'm gonna set my Misty aside, leaving that all in there and we'll pull that back out in a little bit. In the meantime, this is gonna be using lots of inks today. This is gonna be one of those days that Leah's very um, grateful that I'm not making her catch up and link all of the colors I'm using. Post-it tape, and we are going to start. I'm going to do a little bit of masking on the first layer. So let me show you um, the packaging on this. I love that color reference to refer to. Um, so you might notice on this one, and it's beautiful. The first one I did with this for the release. I left that little bit of additional color on the leaves. I'm gonna mask and change that up a little today because I wanna be a little more um, intentional on where my colors are. And I love that you have that um, ability. So we're gonna start, this is gonna be the main one that we're gonna do any of that masking on. And essentially on this, this is definitely one of those stamp sets that is um, very much on the whimsical side. So don't expect it to line up absolutely perfect or anything like that. And that's okay. It's, it's designed to craft outside of the lines a little bit. It's not a bad thing, but I really try to line up my corners. If I start in these two corners and those two corners, that seems to be, do a pretty good job of making sure I've got good alignment. All right, this is gonna be right here. It's gonna be my yellows. I've got all my inks laid out over here. <laughs> so everything, including ink colors, is 
linked in the description so you can follow along on these. Also keep in mind, these are always available for replay as well. And sometimes that can be really helpful also. All right, since these are little areas, I'm gonna use my little blending brushes and I'm gonna start by masking off some of the um, leaf areas. I could probably work around them, but I don't trust myself enough to want to take that chance. So I'm just gonna play it safe, mask them off so I don't have to worry. of the greenery areas. So we will start sunshine to start with. And I'm kind of just going in with a soft little bit of color on all of this. And again, I'm just using my mini brushes just because it's such a nice, tiny, cute little area. I could use the bigger one for this, but this is pretty easy here, so. Okay. I'm going just juicy and happy here with these, this bright sunshiny yellow. Makes me think sunshine and tropical. And then let's switch out these two colors. And I'm gonna add just a hint of orange onto this as well. So I'm just barely getting any ink on there. And I'm mostly starting in the center and just kind of on these, I'm just kind of doing in from one side. These little ones aren't, the tiny, tiny ones aren't as much of a big deal. But I really just, I'm not trying to change it to orange. I'm trying to turn that color into kind of a, a warmer yellow, if that makes sense. Just slightly enhancing the color that's there. Okay, let's get it over there. Bring it. And then this is gonna be the slowest layer. Because we're gonna switch out all of our masking. We're gonna mask off the different, I'm not worried about every little bit of it being masked. Just kind of the main areas. Oh, that one. I think that covers. Let's see. Just because I don't think I need to do much masking beyond this. So I'm just going to make use of what I have here. All right. We're not going to need those colors, but we're going to come in now, real quick, and just hit these areas with a little bit of a mint. And I'm gonna keep this color on this part pretty soft and just in that mint color. I'm just gonna blend in and I'm not gonna add and mix any color layers on this particular part. I'm just gonna keep this that light mint tone. And yes, Jennifer, it does. Just masking gives you that additional, all the other possibilities. Okay, I'll keep all these little pieces because we might have more masking later, but I don't, none that I remember right now. So I'll keep these in case we need them. I'm not thinking we'll use them. I'm just gonna kind of set them off to the side there. Oops, I do need the bottom. Okay, first magic reveal. Doesn't look like much yet. But we're going to just keep building up bit by bit on there. And I will need one more piece of tape for the bottom of the next stencil. So the next one is going to be these large flower. Oh, and you know what? I've already realized, yes, I do have a little bit of masking to do on this one. So we will put those little masks to good use on here. Take this all in place. 
Okay, and then on this, this is where, and you know what, I'm going to use clean masks because there might be enough ink on there. I don't want to risk. Let's mask off first. Let's mask off those little yellow flowers and then we'll I'm not worried about the little bit going over the centers there, but for these other areas, I'm going to mask just those off just because I do want to keep those. Okay. And then this is going to be also, I'm actually going to have two layers with coral reef here today. The large daisies left white too, Luann, that is also a beautiful look. That's actually a really fun idea as well. I'm going to do them in color today. I'm going to do it very softly with coral reef ink because I'm going to use this for another layer and I want to keep this first layer the really soft look and color. So we're going to go very, very light on this one. And then we are going to pull out and do get my, all my right brushes. I'm going to do a little bit of apricot over the top. Very, very light on the apricot as well. Again, I just want to warm up and slightly change that. You can kind of, let me pull that in that color. It's like, coral reef but a timer if that makes this turns to a soft I'm going to come back in just a smidge there with that coral reef brush to go over the top super duper fun I just love how you can mix things and get a completely different ink color which is fun all right and then let's just do a little bit of adjusting of our masks here just going to kind of mask around each of these so that I don't get too close. And I think if I just put a tiny bit there and a tiny bit there, we should be okay. Keep that paper cut there. Having to focus here and keep my uh, ink colors correct. I come in with sweet mustard first. And I know I'm probably missing a lot of comments here just because I am focused more. So sweet mustard for the second layer on those yellow flowers. And then I'm going to do like last time and we'll come in with a little bit more orange to kind of change out that color. To be honest, I almost could have just done the orange all at once as I'm thinking about it, but just come in. Oops, that's not sticking down there. I think there's a little residual ink. I'll just hold it there. Tiny, tiny bit of orange over the top there just to warm up that yellow color again, just like we did on the other layer. Clean off that stencil. Now, now we really. Once again, I'm so. And let's this second layer starting to come to life. Isn't that fun? It's like a whole new different color combo. All right, I'm gonna I'm just checking the comments to make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh Jan, welcome. So glad that you are here for the first time as well. We have lots of new first-time friends today, so we're always happy to have you guys here joining us. All right, I'm just going to line this up here. And let's see, this layer is going to be the coral reef and apricot. Only we're going to do the same as before, just a little bit bolder. Who said that about me working neatly? DK. Sherby. I have to work hard on this to stay organized because there's so many different color combos going on here that 
I'm just doing this. I had to look real quick. I was like, wait a minute, am I missing somewhere I need to mask? But no, we're just gonna blend our color over everything on this layer. So again, coral reef, but bolder and darker. And you can see how it's layering over the other ones that are already there and just adding more color onto that as well. And then, clean that one off a little. Oh, Joanne, how exciting. Now you have all the colors that you can mix and match and play with. And we've had them as long as me, it's fun to change things up a little bit and come up with new color combos. All right, a light skin, just to warm up that color. I want my main color on this to be the coral. The orange is just switch and change it a little. <laughs> coral reef forever, apparently. That one is our favorite and it's like the one color that never ever go anywhere. All right, ready for that next magic reveal. Look at how yummy and juicy those colors are. All right, let's see here. Next, this will be the final layer on the florals and this one lines up nice and easy here if you get those little outer edge ones once you have those you're pretty much good to go for this move up to the little bit bolder color combos let me use passion fruit and clementine And let's just start off here with passion fruit. Such a yummy, juicy. One of my favorite colors too, right after coral reef. They just, I use those two together pretty easily. All right, there's that. <laughs> Luann, when you're crafting on your lap or when you're crafting on your floor, I've done that where I start just chucking stuff on the floor or I sit down on the floor to do stuff because my desk is overrun. I, I tend to be pretty neat and tidy when I'm live a little bit more, when I'm just crafting on my own, not always. Sometimes release days can get a little, or release weeks, I guess, when we're trying to craft in a hurry with all of the new stuff that can get a little bit hairy. All right, there is that next. Oop, I had some ink on my fingers there. Good thing it's on the outer. Grab a wet wipe there because. Just keep those handy on my desk because I don't really want to smudge ink anywhere that I wasn't expecting, at least over there. That's well out of the way of where we're going to cut. All right, next reveal. Here we go. And look how pretty those are. So lots of inks, but it's worth it for kind of the fun, different look you're going to get out of this. Okay. Next up, and then work on the leaves. And this is kind of a different mix of colors that I have on this one as well. And I pull out that mint again and unexpectedly put it with aquamarine. Who would have expected that, right? So we've already got the mint on there. So this is gonna be the one where we change the color a little, but we're gonna start on with just the mint and then we'll blend a little aquamarine over the top when we're done. I think I need to, I use my mint quite a bit and I think it's starting to get to where I need to re-ink it there. It's one of those ones I kind of, coral reef I re-ink pretty frequently. Ocean breeze again as well. And then this is the one that I kind of just, it's like that underrated color that I use a lot, but I don't really think about using. 
And then I realized, oh, it's getting a little dry. I need to add some more to it. Okay, there is the first layer on there. And aquamarine is also what we stamped with. So that one's gonna blend on there a little bit uniquely as well. Where we're gonna stamp over the top. I'm going to just ink. Oops, and I did it again. I got on my fingers. Okay, nice light aquamarine. I'm gonna start kind of at the base of each little bit of the florals and just blend over so it gets a little deeper at the base. Okay, I'm gonna hold this up a little. Can you kind of see the difference that's making on the color? How it's going from that mint to kind of like a mix of the mint and aqua. And I'm trying to kind of preserve some of that mint color still on the outside. So I'm keeping my, my blending pretty light. When you mix and match colors like this, a lot of times you'll be surprised that it takes a lot less than you expect it to. So my advice would be, especially if you're curious, you can always kind of peel up and, you know, look at and, and see what you think of it before you commit and you're done. But I think that's about the right amount. It's just a hint of color over the top of the mint on all of that. Okay, we've only got one layer left. Laura, yes, the mini inks can definitely be um, reinked. All right, here we go. So pretty. It looks like a um, like a fabric print almost to me. Like I don't even know what to call that. But let's get our final layer on here. Line up all of those little bits there, and then we'll be done. And we can this and move on to the rest of our card these two colors out of the way. I just move up in the same color families, but I'm, I'm moving to the next one after mint, which is meadow. And then we're jumping up to the darkest of the aquas. Um, and actually the mint, I didn't, the ocean breeze would have been the lightest equivalent. Um, so I started with aquamarine. So, oh, and you know what, right before I ink up that, that's my light green one. Let me get my darker green one out so I don't muddle those colors. And we'll add our next layer over all of this. It's just, it's fun all the different possibilities you get by mixing your different ink color families. Okay, last little bit of our darker aqua that we're going to put on here now. And on this one, I think I'm actually going to move to my smaller brush because I want to get in some of those little areas. And this is a really dark color, so I really only want just a touch of ink on there. I just want to use that to kind of blend it out there. I probably already got too much ink on there, really, with my first inking. So that'll be enough for everything that I'm going to do on here, I think. the base of all of those, just a touch. And I'm leaving some areas where I'm not putting that on because I want to keep, kind of preserve that two-tone effect a little bit on this one. Um, Michelle, the reason I'm rubbing my, when I ink it up, sometimes I get a blob of ink. So let me kind of grab a little scrap and just show because I feel like we do this a lot. Um, so if I grab this now and I blend on there, look at how I got just, I don't have a smooth, soft blend. I kind of have a big blob where if I ink it up a little and do that and start blending on there, I can build up my color and look how much smoother of a blend I get. I've built it up slowly. And then since I have a glass mat, I can pick up that extra color and still use it. And it just allows me to kind of blend out softer. So, um, Piggy. I, for the most part, I have um, brushes for each color. I almost never, I've probably washed my brushes once in their whole lifespan, maybe twice. And I use them a lot. I just rub them on a dry microfiber cloth. And that's kind of um, how I clean them just like that. So between 
usually when I start, especially if I'm going to a lighter color, I'll make sure and clean them off just so that I know I don't have any residual ink on there. Um, especially if I'm going darker to lighter or something like that. Okay, wipe that off a little bit. And I think we're all done with ink blending. Let's take those out of the way and let's do our final magic reveal. Are we ready? Ta-da! I feel like that's a ta-da. You have to say that. Ta-da! How fresh and pretty is that? And a totally different, I mean, I look at it and I'm like, if I was looking at thinking pink, fresh colors, we don't have colors like that. But by mixing and matching, we were able to create those colors. And that's what's so fun about this. Mm, that's a good idea, wiping them off on an alcohol wipe. I have cleaned my brushes before because um, when we clean our stencils, we use rubbing alcohol and I use it to clean my desk. In fact, I'm going to do that now because we've got a lot of ink on there. So a lot of times I'll use that alcohol on here and then um, the residual that's on there, I'll just clean my brushes there, which probably does a good job of that little bit of um, alcohol cleaning that off. All right. Before we move on further, let's re-stamp our image over the top because it's beautiful, it's soft and pretty, but I just want that little extra of crispness that we're going to get in the image. I'm going to confirm that we match up still. Looks like it's still matching up perfectly. I was really careful to make sure my paper was down in the right corner. I could stamp it in Tidal Pond but I'm gonna stick with the aquamarine. I didn't wanna go with my darkest color. I just wanted to go with a color that's gonna show up. And kind of a different, like I said, it kind of melds into the background a little bit. So let's add, can you see just how much that cleared up the image? I'm gonna stamp it one more time. We don't need to, but I just wanna make sure I have every little tiny bit of detail on there. And that is gonna, it's a dye ink. So just like our stenciling, it's gonna soften up a little bit with time. I hope you can see though, that extra clarity in the detail that we got by stamping again like, like that. Okay, set that out of the way. I'm gonna quickly clean the stamp off now because we're done with this. And I forgot to get my cloth stamp, but I keep a spray bottle of water, so my the homemade stamp cleaner we have that listed on our website the one Leah and I like to use and then I just use a damp cloth to clean that off if there's detail black or anything I'll use a soft brush but um, most of the dye inks and then um, since we were talking about peeling stamps off the background on your misty you don't have the option to peel your misty off but you notice I kind of like get it up and then I just put my fingers in there to push. I don't like to just grab and rip like that. I just like to use my fingers to peel it up. So just along the same lines there of what we talked about and keeping your stamp in good condition. And then see that curled up top, look how perfectly flat it just goes now that I've put it right back onto the stamp. No harm done and everything's clean and ready to go down the road. Misty out of the way, let's go ahead and die cut our florals and then we're ready. I'm going to do a slimline card today is my plan. So we'll uh, get ready to do that here. We're going to be doing what scares so many people cutting florals, but it's worth it. All right, I'm gonna go die cut this in my Gemini real quick off screen. I'll be right back. Here we go. Incidentally, I think this would also be really lovely, um, even with these color combos and heat embossed in gold as well. 
All right, I'm gonna pop all those little detailed pieces out. This is, so this also, this background, I mean, it's big enough for an A2 card. You can even do it without needing the coordinating die, but I don't know if you can see there are all the fun little areas that it cuts out with the die. And I love those little details that just, you couldn't fussy cut those out. <laughs> so it's one of the perks that makes the dies so helpful and handy. All right. So I'm also going to show you. So we're making a slimline card, and I'm going to use the hexagon, um, hexagon tile die, which you might notice is an A2 size die but I'm gonna use it on a slim line. It's not directly a seamless design specifically. However, here's one example where I did it. I'm hoping I'll be able to see it well enough to do it on screen, but I was able just to slightly overlap and get a longer, thinner design. So real quick, I'm using a half of an A2 sheet. I want the extra space to be able to work on and tape everything down. So I'm gonna start by just lining this up, oops, across the top, I've got a bigger piece of tape. So. I'm gonna go a little bit down from the top, just make sure the sides are lined up and tape that in place. And I'm gonna go run that through my die cut machine. All right, here is that first part on the panel. So alternatively, if you don't want to try and line these up, you could also just do this down in another spot, leave a gap to stab a sentiment or something like that. But here's what I discovered. If I turn that image around, I can match up. And the easiest is just to turn and line up the side pieces and kind of pinch and hold when you've got it lined up there. And you'll notice once you have that, that that's gonna be level and matched on each side. So I'm gonna go run that through my die cut machine again. And let's see how well that matched up. Are you ready? Like we succeeded. I noticed I probably because I'm on camera, there's a tiny, tiny bit of shadowing. So I got it slightly crooked um, for that part that overlaps, but it's not enough that's noticeable even on the finished card. Um, but I have another that I did. Um, I did find on this one. I think if I'd started with this, I found this easier to line up than this corner. Cause if you look at what you're matching up with, this is like the little starburst piece and this was the little half hexagon. So if I did that side down first and then flipped it to do the other part there. Um, but I wanted to kind of show you how you can do that and match it up. And again, if you don't wanna fiddle with trying to line that up you can just leave a space in between and still use it on a slimline um, card design. So I have a little bit of other um, things that I've prepared. I have my card base already that I did to match with those colors. I also have pre-die cut the slim stitch scallop rectangles out of some gold cardstock. And that's the largest one. I'm not sure if I'm using both of them or only one, but I have them both die cut for now until I decide. And then also I'm going to use one of the sentiments. We've used these a few times live, so I didn't want to try and break out um, this to do hot foiling today as well. Just taking a break from hot foiling and focusing on the stenciling. But I'm going to have this so proud of you sentiment from the hot foil plate here from modern script sentiments. So Sorry, that was loud. Every time we do these um, live, I end up with a bunch of extras. So 
I figured I'd go ahead and use one of those today. And then one other thing that I'm still up in the air on if I'm going to use or not, now you get to listen to my brain work. I might use this smallest blanket stitched oval. So I'm gonna start assembling this and kind of see where we end up. So this card base is four by nine already. So I'm gonna trim this down a little bit here. Let me just move this out of the way. So just slightly smaller to start with. And then a tiny bit off of each side here, just because I want to keep it even. Actually, you know what? I just realized I have to go. So I'm going to go just a quarter inch smaller than my card base already is. Let's see how we like. I think that will actually work. That's enough of a border. I just want a little bit of a border to go around. So all that good. I can save some of these scraps for other cards. But I haven't quite determined that yet. And then let's decide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put part of this coming down from the top and part of this coming up from the bottom. So this is the, the brave, scary part where we have to cut them in half. We're not going to waste any of the pieces. So it's not as scary as it could be. Let's just pick here. Actually, I actually think that's a pretty good... There's two little grooves there that I think we can... All right, we're committed. I think that's actually gonna work just about right. So we can have one coming down from the top here, one coming up from the bottom. Pull this off of here. And this is where do we put this one on here? Actually, you know what? I think that's gonna cover up too many the florals, but here's one other thing I'm gonna try. And then we put the florals on top of there. That might work. And then that bumps up our florals a little bit higher. I kind of like that. Then it's visible and it kind of takes advantage of the two layers of the um, scallop frame, but it doesn't block too much of the florals. One final to check, let's just see. No, I definitely like that coming underneath there. I just wanted to see if I liked it better over the top. Okay, let me take one last look and just decide if I like it better. Let's just see there, line up that. Hmm, I don't know. It's kind of lovely that way too. A little simpler. Up on the sorry part where I was like, I'm not quite sure what I want. And this is going to go on here. So I'm going to try first. I'm going to cut this. No, you know what? I think I really am going to commit and I'm going to cut that right out of the middle. Let me tape that down and pull all this other stuff out of the way for now. And then we're gonna go cut this through the machine. I'll be right back one more time. That whole scary, scary moment there of committing and cutting that out. 
Now what I haven't decided yet is if I'm gonna keep this piece and just pop it up separately or let that window show underneath. So let's play with our ideas there real quick and see what we think once we get them on there. I'm already loving how that's framing and I think that's gonna make our sentiment pop really well right in the middle. And there's still enough of the, yeah, cause now it kind of looks, although if we pop that up and you can just kind of see the shadow underneath, that's not too bad either. But I think I actually like that little, little bit of a window there, kind of to show that underneath. Okay, we're gonna do that. And I will save this and use that for something else. But I think I really like how all of that is laying out and coming together. So I'm gonna curl up those florals a little bit and then we'll pop this up with foam adhesive. We'll probably pop this background up with foam adhesive and then leave um, at least one layer without foam adhesive because it feels like you need to have at least one there, right? And time for lots of foam adhesive because you know how I feel about my cards being nice and stable and sturdy. I believe if I put this much time into them, I want them to last. Down a little. I can fit a whole big piece in there, so. Same on the sides. I miscalculated slightly, so we'll trim that little extra off there. Leave that piece for later. I think that's gonna be good enough there. Yes, more foam adhesive is always better. <laughs> no saggy cards, I know. I feel like saggy cards, if any of you have watched the British Baking Show and Soggy Bottoms, saggy cards. That's the card making equivalent of a soggy bottom. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna kind of get my head up over here so I can make sure I get this lined up and square. Okay, good, we did it. It's better when you're live and you can't get your head up above the top to see what you're doing to make sure you've got it on there evenly. Fluff up those flowers a little bit there. Just to get a little bit of dimension in them. This will be where I just stick with um, liquid glue for this. I'll be using a little bit of foam adhesive. I'm just gonna put the glue mostly on the center so I can leave the outer edges floating nice and free. Because of the magic of liquid glue, I have a little wiggle room time to kind of get that all into place. Okay, those float up well to give us our dimension. Push on the sides there. Make sure those are doing that. Okay, and then this, to keep that dimension in there, I'm only gonna put foam adhesive at that and along those sides, I think. We'll use our little thin strips that we have. Hopefully those will fit on there well. If I planned ahead, I probably would have just die cut a couple of these frames and stacked them together, but I don't think about that. That's what thin foam adhesive strips are for, right? I'm just gonna eyeball where the center of that is so that 
you don't overlap on the flowers because I don't want to mush those down. And let's make sure that that works there. Yep. All right, here goes nothing or everything. <laughs> the moment of truth there. We'll also need a little bit of foam adhesive there on our sentiment. So keep those foam strips handy. Hold on here. Just noticed I had that whole liquid glue moving thing. Oh, might just be a little too set in stone. It's, this stuff dries and sticks really well. I just noticed I have a little tiny bit here. Man, I did, that might just have to be the way it is because I don't think it's moving anywhere. I have a little white showing there, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. And that isn't going anywhere. So if you wonder how well that liquid glue works, let me be the one to tell you. It does its job quite well. Okay, get those ends in the middle. Oh, that's perfect because it floats free there and lets those florals kind of tuck up around a little bit. Almost could have tried to tuck them through, but that wouldn't have worked all the way. I would have had to cut something. But all right, it's coming together. Finally, just need to add our, our sentiment on there. So some of these little tiny bits of foam tape are gonna come in handy to get those little skinny places. Not gonna get every bit of it. Pretty dainty set, but I'm going to try and get at least a few of the spots. It's going to tuck in there, so I don't think it'll show too much if a little bit of the foam adhesive is visible back behind. Another trick on this that I didn't plan ahead enough for is to um, die cut several of these and just stack them up to get that dimension. There. It's gonna be fun to peel off all these little backing pits, but all right, we'll call that good. I think that'll do. Let's just set it in there and make sure. I think that's good. Get the white of uh, this isn't that the white barely shows. You probably mean the white of the foam adhesive, right? Because it matches in with the border on this. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping for. It just definitely needed to be up on foam adhesive to pop off that background. All those little tiny pieces. That's when I have a foam adhesive remorse. It's when I have to peel all those little tiny bits off. Okay, I set that at a little bit. Let's see. Yep, an angle looks best on that one. And we only have one finishing touch we need to worry about here. Let me get all my, sorry, I've got my little neat freak moment there. I have to clean all those little backings off. And we'll need this again, but I want to make sure it doesn't uh, jam up on me while I pull out. Anybody have any guesses? Next four, jewels or crystals? Pretty sure crystals. I thought about the gold pearls, but I think Well, it might be white today. Even the green would work, but I think I like the, pretty sure we're gonna do white. I have to pull out, this is part of our June release at the end of the month. This is our new little embellishment tray. 
super pretty and we are so excited about this one. This has been something we've worked on for quite some time to get it all perfected and ready to go. I think I'm gonna do the little, I was thinking of them as the Leah row of bling. Kind of just tuck in the little sparkly my circle there and do one at the top as well. Let's see. Other side so we get. And I'll adjust them in place here once I get them all on there in the right sizes. Yes, I see Leah's just mentioning that all of our um, pearls were recently restocked. Okay, I'm gonna wiggle them all into the place I want them here. Maybe you have something stuck on you that's sticky. There we go. Let's use that to move them around. Nope, still got them. Okay, sorry, my brain goes into high focus mode to make sure I've got these put in here smoothly. To have them equally spaced out so they work. Now I'm just gonna second guess myself here for a moment. because I'm pretty sure I wanna keep those there, but I also wanna ponder if I just wanna put them on some of the flowers instead. I know I don't wanna do all of it on everything, but it might be that I like them better around here. Lay them on and we'll see what, see what we think. Actually, you know what, with that one covered up, that made my mind up because I've got the frame over that one. So I'm gonna stick with this current placement. If I'd taken a little bit more time today too, this would have been a really pretty shaker element too. All right, and I'm gonna show you what's fun about this tray now. Are you ready? And really nice for your pouches, but look how perfectly it just points them right down into the little container. Yeah, for a second, I thought I was gonna like them better on the flowers, but that one is too covered up and then it looks odd if I have a big one down there, so. We'll just stick with the status quo here on what we did. But yes, a shaker card would have been a really cute way to do this too. Okay, just quickly adhere these all down and then we'll be done. A little tiny dot of adhesive. Unfortunately, it dries clear, so you'll never see it. I have residual adhesive on my tool placer and I need to clean it off a little. I did a lot of kind of rush crafting over the weekend. So I think I was not as cautious as I should have been. Okay, just make sure that those are good while I still have a second that I can adjust them if I need to. So you saw how quick that glue dried on me before. So it's not time to change my mind later. I think a few people were asking, um, I'm gonna give another close look at this. I don't know if people floral design at that. And then the pink fresh low is back and it's, it's brass, it's not plastic. I don't know if you can kind of hear it. 
So it's nice and solid and sturdy and uh, just beautiful. It's classy and it's just gonna look great on your desk and in photos as a prop and everything else. Okay. One final closer look at our card today. It's a slim line, so I always feel like I have to kind of move it through the camera frame. That gold frame and that fun, fresh tropical color. So you know what I just noticed? My um, Starbucks cup here. Almost like I got some color inspiration there from that, I'm noticing. I feel like it's kind of my colors of summer. All right, I'm going to turn this camera around. I just realized it's already two o'clock. This hour flew by. And I'll let Leah pick and announce a winner for us today too. Thank you everyone for joining us today and um, just for chatting and playing and everything with us while we looked at these beautiful um, mix of colors. Oh, Barb, you almost cried when I cut the floral. You know what? It, it scared me for the longest time. And I, now that I just kind of realize, you know what? It's paper, it's ink. I can redo. I, I have redone it when I've messed up before. So even live, I've messed up before and we've redone it. So yes, that's, that's a new favorite color combo that I really like the mixing and matching together. Great. So we should be here for Facebook live on Thursday. Um, we haven't chatted yet. We need to find a time to reschedule craft hour. Um, it was supposed to be at the beginning of the month and Jeff ended up getting sick. So we had to postpone. Um, I don't know when that's going to be, but there will be Facebook live on Thursday with Leah. And then next week we should be around for our sneak peek um, Facebook live together. And I just see Leah just announced DK Sherby. I said, I hope I said your name right. Congratulations. You won today's $15 gift card. You need to email Leah. Her name is spelled L-E-A, no H on the end, at pinkfreshstudio.com. I always feel like when I say that, it's like the Anne with an E, Leah without an H. It's kind of the version of that. Anyway, congratulations, and thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, uh, yes, and as Leah just pointed out, as long as her hot spot, she is staying with family in Texas and doing um, working remotely. So she's planning on going live. There's always that you can't guarantee technology. So if it doesn't work, we'll just have to postpone that. So, but at this point we're planning on um, seeing you again on Thursday. So thank you everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week and we will see you very soon.